call this meeting of the Jacksonville City Council to order. I want to welcome everyone who's in attendance here at the meeting tonight and also those that are viewing on G10 television. I'd like to begin tonight uh, with our Pledge of Allegiance, and I would like uh, Mr. Christopher Ayer. He's a star. Uh, he's on his last mission as a Star Scout, uh, representing Troop Number 937 from Sneedsbury. If you would come forward and lead us in the pledge, sir. Please rise. allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you would please remain standing for the uh, invocation, Mr. Carter. Thank you. Our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this day, for your love and care of each of us and of our city of Jacksonville. You have gifted each of us with the opportunities of a new year to be of service to you and service to others. We pray that you would empower us so that in our respective roles here with the city of Jacksonville, our service would always be pleasing in your sight to you and to this community and the citizens that we serve. We pray for our military who is serving us here and around the world for their safety, and for their anxious families. And as always, we pray for your guidance to be with our mayor and with our council. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Mr. Ayers, I want to thank you very much for leading us tonight. Thank you. <coughs> Council, at your place, you have a copy of tonight's agenda and the consent items. And I would entertain a motion to adopt. Move approval. Second. Any, any comment? <clears throat> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Next, we have a minutes from the December 3rd, 2013 organizational meeting and the December 3rd, 2013 regular meeting. Move approval of the minutes as submitted, December 3rd, the organizational meeting and the regular meeting. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Next, we have uh, several presentations, and I'm going to come around down front here. first item tonight that we're going to present our presentation is the swearing in of our new youth council for this uh, for this term and I don't see Carmela anywhere there you are okay I'm having Carmela Fulcher who is going to assist me with this Carmela George I keep forgetting she got married anyway the Jacksonville Youth Council serves to give youth in our community a voice they <clears throat> they govern themselves, they perform public service, and they operate the youth center, which is located across the street here. We as the elected officials of the city of Jacksonville welcome the input from our youth council and any suggestions that they make that would help, you know, promote the youth in this community. Tonight we are going to administer the oaths, and I'm going to call each of you up, and if you would come up with your parents or whoever your significant others are that you're, you brought with you tonight. Most of you probably don't have any, uh, any significant other, others with you since you're high school students. But um, first, I would like to uh, call up Robert Whaley, who's uh, going to be the vice chair, and he's from Jacksonville High School. Go Cards. Uh, pa uh, parents' name are Nancy and Roy Whaley. Okay, next uh, will be the Office of Recorder, and this is Iodema, I hope I'm saying this right, Ojibubu. And I'm sure I've probably, my apologies. Okay. 
Would you say her first name for me? I Iota May. Iota May. Okay. Iota May is also a Jacksonville High School student, and she's, uh, I assume you're her mother, <laughs> joining her up here tonight, uh, Omalara. Okay. Solomon Scott, who will be an executive committee member from White Oak High School. And his uh, parents' names are David and Gromio, Gromico Scott. Next is uh, for another executive committee member from Jacksonville High School. And this is Sierra Tucker. Sierra's parents are Maurice and Darlene Tucker. And another executive committee member will be Tanya Mittal from Parrot Academy, and her parents are Navita, Nivedita and Madher Mittal. Welcome. I'm very pleased to see that uh, you have decided that you are going to help, uh, help us here at the City of Jacksonville by serving on the Youth Council as officers. Appreciate your input into uh, what our city uh, does and tries and tries to do for our youth here. Now, I'm going to administer this oath of office to you, and if you will, you know, do the uh, raise your right hand or raise, raise your left hand and put your right hand on the Bible. Uh, I know each of you probably have someone here to hold it for you. And if you would repeat after me, and when I say state your name, that means state your name. And um, when it comes to state your office, I'll say state your office, and if you will just say what your office is, that would uh, be most helpful. All right. I state your name. Do solemnly swear that I will support and maintain the constitutions and laws of the United States and the constitution and laws of the state of North Carolina, not inconsistent therewith. It's a mouthful, I know, I'm sorry. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of my office. And if you will please state your office. Of the Jacksonville Youth Council. And maintain and uphold. All the laws and regulations. Of the city of Jacksonville. So help me God. Congratulations, you are hereby sworn in and installed. time and, and y'all look like a very energetic group and I think that you'll make a, a large contribution to the city of Jacksonville. Thank you very much for coming out tonight. Thank you. Thank you guys. More pictures? Oh. You got it? Okay. Tanya, I need you and I need Angela Wilkins. And Chief Yanera, I know you're here somewhere. Angela's trying to figure out who Angela is. Hey, Chief. The Department of Public Safety's police commendation is awarded to members of the department for specific acts that resulting in extraordinary police service, including 
uh, providing outstanding assistance with complex tasks and, and, and projects. Working together, Administrative Assistant Tanya Terry and Records Manager Angela Wilkins completely reorganized previous completed components of the software product to meet the new state reporting mandate. This prevented time consuming and expensive retraining of officers and other employees to learn the new codes, creating efficiencies and the most effective use of the new software. Both women have spent countless hours developing all of the vital information necessary to ensure that the implementation was successful for official use. I have a plaque and accommodation here that I would like to give each of you in recognition of your work on this project, and I appreciate it. This is, this is Tanya. It's got Tanya's name on it, right? <laughs> and there's Angie. Or Angie. There's Angie's. Chief, you want to say something about these two young ladies? I'll be glad to. <laughs> this uh, this project, this OSSI project, where we transitioned into the, took a tremendous amount of time and effort, and these two really put a lot of effort to keep the officers on the streets. You know, we talk about what the officers do on the street and, and how important it is, but they are the people behind the scenes, and they do such a great job of making sure that the officers stay on the street, making sure that the detectives get what they need, and I really, I really want to thank them for their efforts as we transitioned into this new software. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much. It went off without a hitch, did it, ladies? <laughs> Next, uh, I have some representatives I know from Target here tonight, and uh, I'd like to ask them to come forward. I have Mr. Adam Gatzinger, who's a Target Group Asset Protection Leader. Uh, Jake Oni, please correct me if I'm not saying that right. He's the Target Asset Protection Business Partner. And Sean Brock who's an asset protection team leader of the Jacksonville store. If you would join me up front, please. Gentlemen, how you doing? Good to see you. Good corporate citizens. Uh, Target selected the Jacksonville Police Department's National Night Out event for the, their 2013 Excellence Award. This award recognizes the top 10 national night outs events hosted by uh, teams across the country. And at this time, I'm going to stop and I'm going to ask Chief Yanero if you'll join me in Trish Triggers. Is she here? Right there in front of me. Captain Triggers. Okay. <clears throat> and I'm going to let you hold that. Target provided a $1,000 grant award to JPD as a token of their appreciation. And uh, again, like I say, I appreciate what you, what your con contribution to our efforts here in Jacksonville. And like I say, you're a good presence in this community. Your, your, your company is a great presence in this community, and we appreciate all that you do for us. And uh, I guess you want to present that to Chief, Captain. Here's the. Um Award of Excellence for the 2013 National Night Out. Um, you know, you're an intricate part of that process. You do a lot of work, a lot of planning during the year. You done. A, I mean, I've been in your office where you're about to pull your hair out because you were stressed <laughs> out over uh, something with the National Night Out. So, you know, we know what you do, and we wanted it to go uh, and we didn't want it to go unrecognized. Uh, you know, so this is more for you and the people that put most of the time into the National Night Out. Uh, you know, I know the mayor's out there. Uh, a lot of different people in the community, not just the police department, have a lot to do with the National Night Out. Um, and that's one reason that Target sponsored it, so that we can be a part of the community and make sure that the people in the community knows that, you know, you have that partnership with uh, retailers and the police department. So we just thank you for all you do. Thank you. We appreciate thank you. it. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Thanks again. Thank, thank you very much. Appreciate you all taking time out of your schedule to come up here with us. Of course. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. The next uh, presentation is not on the agenda tonight, but uh, I'm going to ask uh, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Lazar to come out here and help me with this one. I might need a little help. Thank you, sir. Okay. Now that I got him here, the School of Government at UNC, at UNC Chapel Hill and the North Carolina League of Municipalities had recently notified us here at the city that Mayor Pro Tem Michael Lazar had graduated from the local elected leaders academy with the des designation of practitioner. Since 2008, Mayor Pro Tem Lazar has completed 48 credit hours of approved governmental courses, including 18 hours of governmental education programs designated as focused and in-depth. With this endeavor, Mayor Pro Tem Lazar has taken the initiative to advance his knowledge of local government issues. This in turn has substantially increased his effectiveness as a representative of this city. We're honored to have Mayor Pro Tem Lazar as a member of the city council, and I certainly am. Uh, and on behalf of this city council, the city staff, and our citizens, we uh, congratulate Michael Lazar, Mayor Pro Tem Michael Lazar, and, and taking the time out of your busy schedule, which you're, you've got a very busy schedule. I don't know where you found time to do all this, but I appreciate your uh, uh, passion for what you do and, and uh, you're wanting to make yourself a better representative of the people. Thank you very much, Michael. Mayor, uh, just want to say thank you. Uh, it's a, it's a privilege and an honor to serve the citizens and the Jacksonville City team. And uh, I made a pledge when I first was uh, selected to be in office that I would give it my best. And that's what I will do as long as the citizens will have me. So thank you very much. Back there, and yeah. stand up. Well, you know, the one thing about it is, Dr. Woodruff, that's one of our proudest moments is on National Night Out. Uh, it's, it's the premier event, I think, in this community right now. We get a lot of people downtown on, on, on that. You know, it's a, it's a great opportunity for the community to, uh, you know, interrelate or, you know, mix it up with our law enforcement, our, our fire and our emergency services people. Uh, but it's also a good time for the community to get out and, you know, and mingle amongst themselves. And uh, I encourage anyone who has never been to National Night Out to mark on your calendar for the first Tuesday in August, correct? Uh, to come on down, uh, have plenty of fun, plenty of food, and just get out and see the people in your city, in, in your community, not just the city. A lot of people come in from outside the city. We let them come too. Uh, but anyway, come on out. And our police department, our fire department, our, you know, these folks that just stood up here a minute ago, they do one bang-up job, and I, and I have to give it to them. Uh, it's gotten better. I th always thought it was pretty good when I was down there, but they, they do better than what it was when I was there. So uh, kudos to you for what you do. All right. Now, if there's anyone here, <coughs> now don't all of you run or anything. Don't run. Uh, if you don't want to stay for the rest of the business meeting, I'm going to take just a, a quick uh, breather here and allow you to, uh, for lack of better words, escape the chambers. But you're welcome to stay. <laughs> By all means, if you want to stay, you stay. <laughs> Ready?
Appreciate it. Target. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I believe it was, we had, um, recessed a public hearing and uh, the first item on the agenda tonight will be to reconvene that public hearing for this voluntary annexation position for Fraser Park, Section 2 uh, off Williamsburg Parkway. Mayor and Council, uh, Mr. John Pierce, uh, on behalf of uh, Petitioner John Koenig, asked that this petition be withdrawn. And because it had been set to a day and time specific, we therefore put it on the agenda for the council tonight. So we're asking the mayor to reconvene the public hearing and to close it, and then to take a vote to accept their request to withdraw their petition for annexation of this particular section of Williamsburg uh, Plantation. Okay. At this time, I will close the public hearing and in this matter, council, you've been asked to uh, uh, accept the withdrawal petition. I move that we approve. Second. I have a motion to second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those not in favor? <clears throat> Brings us to our first section of public comment for the evening. I do not have anyone that is having signed up. Is there anyone who came in and wants to speak at public comment uh, that came in after the sheet was taken up? All right. Don't see anyone, so that'll take us to agenda item number eight which is the purchase of E911 equipment, uh, wireless communication. And this is uh, Chief Mike Inero, uh, Director of uh, Public Safety, and you'll also have Earl Bunning in reserve. Chief. Mayor, Council, thank you very much for this opportunity to talk about uh, the 911 system. You know, we talked about this, I guess, uh, several months ago when we talked about the transition from, from our digital, our analog 911 to the digital system. So we want, kind of wanted to give you an update and kind of wanted to talk a little bit about what we're going to be doing over the next several months as we move into the new public safety center. Actually, this is the picture of the 911 center in the new public safety center. It looks quite different now. It's got the walls up, and uh, I was just informed that the floor has been put down. So we're, we're progressing toward moving to, this, to the Center of Public Safety. One of the things I wanted to emphasize is the reason that we're kind of putting all this stuff together is to improve our response time. That has been something that we have worked on both in, in fire and police services over the last several years. It's so important to make sure that we get to the scene and, and we've seen, because of that improved response time um, in front of the council, 11 times we've come here in the last year and honored our, our public safety personnel for saving lives. And that's what this whole system is all about. It's bringing these components together and putting them together so that we have a system that we can notify them much, much quicker than we are right now. <clears throat> And, you know, I, I, was, I was telling Dr. Woodruff the other day, I think of this as my house of cards because we put all these cards together and we're trying to, trying to put them together with the opening of the public safety center. So the digital radio and the upgrades to the 911 system will all be done at once. And, and the reason we wanted to do that was in order to increase our effectiveness and efficiency. You know, if we did it in a piecemeal fashion, we'd have to do training, then implement it, training, implement it. This way, what we're going to do is when we open the center and we transition from the EOC back to the Center for Public Safety, we'll do one training on both the 911 system and the new radio system and incorporate those both into a training process so we don't have to do it in a piecemeal fashion. It'll also, I think, be more effective because We'll be able to work those bugs out before we, before we make the actual move. 
So part of this system is, is obviously the radio system. And this is, uh, uh, Earl, Earl took this picture up at Motorola where they are actually testing the system. So the parts have been delivered and they will be installed in the new Center for Public Safety within the next several months. <clears throat> the other part of this is, is the 911 system. And, and actually, the council, some of the council have, have asked me about 911 calls that have gone to the county versus come to the city when they should have came to the city. And one of the things that we're looking at is, is transitioning to a digital system. And that digital system will give us more control of, of those phone calls. We think it's going to be more effective. There's, in, a, in a little while, the, the state will mandate it. Um, but we wanted to be ahead of the curve, and we saw this as an opportunity as we move into the new Center for Public Safety to do this all at once. <clears throat> this is actually what our new comm center is going to look like. Uh, we're going to have seven consoles. Um, it's going to be it's going to be state of the art. Um, it's it's very important that we that we plan it properly, though. And, and that's one of the things we've been working on. So the first part of this process will be to upgrade our 911 answering system, the Patriot system. Now these expenses are eligible for 911 funds, so they're not coming out of the general fund. But we wanted to make you aware that we're going to be coming to you over the next several months because we're putting this house of cards together to make sure that uh, that you that that we kept you well informed on the progress of this center because it virtually will change the way that, that we operate. It'll change the way that we operate with a radio system. It'll change the way we operate from answering phone calls to how we locate those people to how we dispatch our, our uh, emergency services. So this 911 call center will be upgrading so that we can we can use the digital system, which is geographically based versus phone number based over the next several months. The other part that we're going to be doing is buying a new 911 recording system. So that is, is kind of just a, a brief overview of where we're going and why we're asking for those funds tonight so that we can, um, we can set that target date when the new Center for Public Safety opens our new 911 system will be implemented and our new radio system will be implemented. So I'll be glad to answer any questions. Yes. Just a, just a, a comment or whatever. Um, I, I saw somewhere, read somewhere where uh, cellular 911 calls still aren't always uh, able to be pinpointed. Uh, what are you? What are we doing to address that that issue? I'm glad you answered asked that question because it, it is the, a digital rate. A digital uh, 911 call actually uses X Y coordinates. Basically, what we do right now is we look at the phone number, and the phone number establishes what services that we're going to dispatch. So you have three, three, three nine-digit number, and that establishes how, how we receive the call and what that location is. Now, the towers where, where, where those calls come in have certain phone numbers associated with them. So if that call comes in, it pinpoints it by the tower and gives us a, an approximate location and allows us to dispatch the, the services. That is 40-year-old technology. What we're going to be doing is, as we transition into a digital system, the digital signal from here will enable 911 to actually determine exactly where I'm at within three or four feet. So it's much more precise and much more effective. And that's, that's some of the issues that we've been dealing with over the last several years. As we get toward the fringes of the city, uh, because we have three PSAPs, we have the Onslow County PSAP, we have Camp Lejeune's PSAP, and we have the City of Jacksonville, some of those calls go to the other PSAP because they hit the tower in a different way. With a digital system, 
we'll be able to establish that much quicker and much more reliable than we are right now. It's not 40-year-old technology. It's going to be, um, it's going to be the most up-to-date technology. Presume sufficient funds exist in a 9-11 fund to pay for this, or yes, they do. Okay. Um, we have a we have a, a balance, a fund balance of about seven hundred thousand um, dollars. Over the next four or five months, we'll be spending that down as we buy the equipment for the new. Uh, the new 911 center. Any other questions? Thank you, Chief. Counselor, you've been asked to authorize staff to proceed with the purchase under the uh, GS 143-129 exemption <coughs> from competitive bidding to, due to the sole source standardization and compatibility. Mr. Mayor, move, move the purchase. <clears throat> Second. Okay, have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. That brings us to agenda item number nine for tonight. This is an auditor's report on the city's comprehensive annual financial report. And we have with us tonight Mr. Gary Ridgeway from McGladry, McGladry LLP. He will present the report. Gary, good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yes, we've uh, completed the report. And so, again, hopefully you've had a chance to uh, read through this fine document that uh, the Gail Maids and her staff has uh, prepared. And again, we did do the audit. And uh, there's just a few things that we wanted to point out to you tonight uh, in, the, uh, in the report itself. And one of the biggest things I guess I would like to uh, point out is that, again, we didn't prepare this report. We did audit it. So. Uh, uh, we are, there's only a few things, a few pages in this report that is McGladry's, uh, uh, I guess, uh, documents, and that's our opinions. We don't, uh, uh, we don't take that lightly. We are, we are charged by this, by this board to uh, come in and, and uh, do our tests, do our uh, due diligence on the financial statements, and uh, we have uh, obviously get very good uh, response times and assistance from Gail Maids and her staff as well as the other department heads where it becomes uh, necessary for us to interact with. The biggest thing I guess to point out to you is that we did do an audit, we did issue, we have a responsibility to issue one of about four different types of opinions. Uh, an unqualified or now we call it unmodified opinion is the best and that's the clean opinion where I'm glad to say that we obviously did do it render an unqualified opinion this year. They changed that terminology unmodified, so I'm still struggling with that concept. Uh, but again, we did issue an un, a clean opinion on the financial statements and uh, again for this year. So the, the other thing that I guess to, to point out is that that's a good report on the finances of the city and the presentation of the financial statement that you do have. The other thing I guess to point out is that as we have in the last number of years is to give you the information and the citizens if they wanted to look through and find out. Again, this is a 300 and some odd page document. It's very voluminous, very uh, cumbersome to walk through. But if the board or any other person in the city wanted to look at and get a kind of a, a sketch of what happened during the past year, if they looked through the, the management's discussion analysis, the MDNA uh, documents, that gives a uh, narrative of what happened. And I think that's a good place for anybody to look at to get a gain an understanding of what happened during this past year uh, at the city of Jacksonville. And I think that's, uh, again, we just want to point that out because that's probably, again, the best summary that you can get. Our finances, uh, as you can well imagine, with all the projects that you have going, the special revenue funds that you have going on, uh, it's very, very cumbersome to uh, keep up with all of that stuff and read through it. But again, I point out to look, go through that and read that information. The other thing that we uh, point out to you tonight is, and again, it's part of the reason that uh, I explained about the, uh, the complexity of our government finances, is that we did issue, did have to uh, incorporate two different types of what we call GASB standards this year. Uh, one is called GASB 63 and one is GASB 65. 63 basically took deferred revenues, deferred assets, uh, and took them and took them out of the asset section and put those in a separate 
presentation on the balance sheet than what they had in the past. And they call them deferred inflows and deferred outflows. And so it's a little bit different uh, presentation on the balance sheet than what we've had in the past. And what that basically says is they're saying take those things out of assets and liabilities and separately distinguish those items on the balance sheet because those things are for future references, future uh, issuances of, of uh, expenses or future expenditures and revenues that need to be recognized in a future period. So they want to de delineate those things on the balance sheet. So now that 63 says let's put those out there as deferred inflows and deferred outflows. The other thing was GASB 65 is something that probably should have been done years ago, but it's another one of those things that, they, that the uh, uh, Government Auditing Standards Board has decided to, again, tell the cities and the counties across the country that the issuance costs that, that it costs to issue bonds, in the year that you've issued bonds, those costs in, historically have been amortized over the life of the bonds. Well, those are one-time costs, and they're essentially just costs of issuing the debt. They don't have any future uh, benefits to the, to the uh, issuer or the borrower. So what they said is those things need to be expensed in the year that you issue the bonds. So what they did is they implemented this standard and any issuance costs that were still being amortized out over the life of old bonds had to be recognized in its expenses in this year. So essentially what you'll find in your, balance, in your financial statements this year is a restatement of those old issuance costs. For the city of Jacksonville, it was not a very large uh, transaction. I think in this, this year, the city had like $280,000 worth of unamortized issuance costs in the governmental activities. So it wasn't a large number for you guys. The city of, I um, mean, some of the counties, some of the uh, entities that have got a lot of debt out there that they've issued over the years, they had several million dollars worth of issuance costs. They had to, quote, restate their beginning fund balance. So again, that was the culmination of that change. So you do have a restatement. It did affect your opening fund balance from last year. But again, it was strictly because of an accounting change. So again, going forward, any issuance costs for bonds will just be expensed in the year that they occur. So again, that's the two big items that kind of hit this year. And again, that gets, makes that complexity of the financial statements be uh, a little bit more challenging for people to read through and figure out what happened this year. But again, I want to point out to you those two big, were the biggest things. I guess the other thing to point out is that if you go and look at your, because I always go back to the, I'm a, I'm a fund balance, financial statement type person. Uh, yes, you do have a net position, uh, net asset, statement of activities, financial statements under what we used to call, what we called uh, GASB 34, but your fund statements are the ones that you still deal with, your fund balance statements. So when you go and look at page 36 uh, and 37 and 38, those are your fund statements that uh, you, you budget off of those, you uh, determine what your fund balance is available, and on page 35, I mean, excuse me, 36, that's your balance sheet for governmental funds, and you do have a ending general fund uh, fund balance of $19.7 million, of which $5.4 million of that was unassigned or available for appropriation in this year if you so did needed to do so. You've already appropriated in this year $5.2 million, so the 5.4 is still available if you need to appropriate it. So again, that's, a, that's the amount of dollars that you have available in fund balance in the general fund. You can see that you have some in other funds, but the biggest one that you operate out of is your general fund. The other thing to point out is on page 38 is again your general funds revenues. You had a net change in fund balance of this year of $1.2 million. And if you go and look at how your budget was, which is reflected again on page 40, your budget for this year, you budgeted to be, final budget was like $40 million in revenue, $42 million in expenditures. Your actual revenue received was $39.5 million, so you're a little bit below what your budgeted revenue was. And, but your expenditures 
were $36.4 million. So you're like $5.8 million in less in expenditures going out. So again, being very conservative on what you expend, which is what you expect your staff to do, uh, and your oversight uh, it plays a major part of that. Your revenue, once you budget what your revenue is, a lot of times you really can't expect to what, what you know, you can't control what that's going to be. But again, you budget as best you can, and I think in the revenue side, you're pretty close to what you thought you were going to get in, you got in. Uh, so again, I think overall, if you go and look at page 40, that tells you what your beginning budget was and what your ending budget is. So again, and also a comparison of what your actual came out to be. So I think the city ended up in the, at the end of the year in as good a financial position as we can be in in the today's climates. So I think that's a, a, a good place to be right now. Uh, again, not any drastic swings, but I know you got some coming up in this year with some challenges for the sales tax differences in sales tax allocation. So again, having a fund balance, a healthy fund balance, is always a good place to be in. But the biggest thing, I guess, is that what we do is go through and, and audit the numbers that are presented and make sure that there's not any major changes that needs to be implemented. We did not have, we also have to go and look at internal controls. We didn't have any issues with internal controls to report as either significant or material weaknesses. Uh, so that's, a, again, a good report to be in uh, for a city. The other thing we do is we look at compliance. We have to look at, uh, we test compliance on a rotating basis based off of the federal and state grants that, you, that the city receives. We had one issue that we had this year where we had uh, to do actual refund back to uh, the granting agency based off of the fact that the granting agency required Buy America, if you, get, if you get our funds, you've got to use the money on Buy America product. Uh, so there were some units in the energy block grant that were, um, you know, is one of those things that was pretty much out of your control, but it still, you had to adhere to the grant. And there was some heat vac units bought that were actually built in another out of country. And so those funds couldn't be uh, reimbursed out of that granting program. So you had to spend that money back. And again, it's one of those things that you have to just stay on top of all of the vendors even though you dealt with the vendors all the same times over multiple years, sometimes they will actually have changes that they don't really know about until after the fact. And that's really what happened here. So again, it was like a $56,000 refund back to the granting agency. And trust me, we went through and had Gail and the staff at the, at the city go back and try to get a waiver of that to be able to keep those funds uh, in the city. And that didn't work out. So we. We had to obviously show that, and I think the city's already, they had to accrue it and already paid the money back. That, again, that's the only thing that, uh, that came out as part of our compliance testing that, for this year. So I think it's still a good place to be in. Again, any question on this, I'm not going to go through the rest of these. I think the rest of it is pretty straightforward. The biggest thing, I guess, to take away is uh, we issued a, an unmodified opinion, didn't have any control, any internal control issues and you have a very healthy fund balance, not excessive by any means, but you are very in a good financial position at this time. Thank you. Uh, Council, any questions of Mr. Ridgeway? I'm not sure he can answer it or whether Gail. In the letter of representation. Yes, sir. And that's the next thing I'm going to go over. I haven't gone over that. Yes, you sure can. Go ahead, well, Mr. I'll Bittner. wait for you. Okay. <laughs> I'll go over that because that is the next document. I just wanted to check, kind of hold these things separate there. But this document, again, we'll come, we would be glad to. I know you get ready to start your budget process. If you have any questions that we can help address with the audit report for last year, please let us know. We'll be glad to come back what and spend time. To that. What, what department did you pay particular attention to this year? The main department we always paid, we paid to attention to this year would be in the finance and in the uh, police. Okay. The other thing that we have in here in this document here would be, this is our other required communication to the board, which is what we call our SAS 114 letter. And in this particular case, we, it's almost like it's a report card of how the audit went. And believe me, if we'd had any issues that came up during the process of the audit that we needed to address, we'd have already addressed it with the board before tonight. 
So this is the formal process of saying that if you go through and look at that, what new accounting <coughs> changes were implemented, which we talked about a minute ago, also goes through and tells you that if we had any audit adjustments or if we had any what we call uncorrected misstatements and we didn't have any of those, the only audit adjustment we had was the one dealing with the uh, funds that had to be re refunded back to the granting agency. The other thing that we had is no disagreements with management, so we got, obviously got, had uh, excellent cooperation from the management and from the accounting staff. The other thing is that's attached here is, you'll see, is the representation letter. And that representation letter we do have to get the, the manager and the, the finance officer to sign. Basically, we're asking them an awful lot of questions, and we are preparing our opinions based off of the financial statements, and a lot of it has to do with representations that they have to give us as to did, you know, as to the, their responsibilities that they have to uh, address when we're doing our audit. So again, that's a copy that you have attached to that letter. And so if Mr. Bittner, if you have any questions on that, I'd be glad to address that to you. I'm not so much sure it's a question as a matter of gaining understanding. On page one, item number eight of the financial statements, maybe you can clarify this. Quote, we have advised you that there are no other organizations except for the Jacksonville Tourism Development Authority for which the nature and significance of their relationship with the city are such that the exclusion would cause the reporters, reporting entities' financial statements to be misleading or incomplete. You translate that to English, please. Okay. What we're saying there is that there are no other financial no other entities that should be reported and reflected in this document of the, the CAFR for the city. There may be other agencies out there that the city has relationships with, but they are not, the city does not have a responsibility to appoint their boards, to uh, appoint, approve their budgets, and the fact that those entities should not be included on the financial statements of the city. This is basically saying that they're representing to us that there are no other boards like that other than the Tourism Development Board. If there were, then we'd have to enumerate those here. And those financial statements would be reflected in the city. So you have relationships with the ABC board where you get some funds from the local ABC board as an allocation from that, but they're not part of the city's purview as far as financial information is concerned. And the Tourism Authority isn't? The Tourism Authority is. That's what this is saying, that the Tourism Authority has been <coughs> included in it. It's saying that there are no others it's other than that. the Tourism Authority. Community development wouldn't fall in under that? Well, community development is already included in, if there's any community development that the city is doing, is already included in the financial statements themselves. It's not okay. a separate authority. All right. And, and the difference, just to add a uh, moment of clarity there, the difference is the Tourist Development Authority has its own decision power. They can determine how they're going to spend their money. Unlike community development, where the money does come from the federal government, you as the elected body of the city determine where that money and how that money is going to be spent. I understand. Thank you. Any other questions? Anybody else? Okay. Thank you, Gary. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. One of the things that we do appreciate uh, the work of you and your staff, I have a question I always ask, and I will ask it again for the record. Uh, this is an audit that you prepare on behalf of the mayor and council, not on behalf of the city staff. And has anyone on the city staff, city management, or finance department, or anyone else, in any way tried to influence your determinations in this audit? Absolutely not, and you're exactly correct. We do serve at the pleasure of the board. And that's why I said a while ago, the, the biggest thing that we do is we're coming back and rendering an opinion on the financial statements, but without a doubt, we get cooperation from management and the staff, but we're the ones that end up making the calls. If there's anything that needs to be addressed, we're the ones that make that call on the, city's beha on the city board's behalf. You're exactly correct. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Appreciate you coming. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Mayor, before you leave the audit, uh, as you know, uh, two weeks away we have our, our first budget workshop. 
we will be spending a lot of time relative to pages 36, 37, and 38, and also in the page 40 area at that workshop. We would encourage you to take time to look through your audit but we will, as a staff, be spending a lot of time with you two weeks away on those particular pages. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Council, you've been asked to accept the uh, comprehensive annual financial report for the year 2013. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? I'd like to make one comment. Please. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> just for clarifications for the viewers, maybe, that it's a lot to listen to from the auditor there. I think the, for what me, for me, what stood out, I guess, uppermost was that we did end up the year of 2013 with an additional 1.2 so positive addition to our fund balance. And I think the other very significant thing I've noticed was during, um, during the year end of June 30th, 2013, our total debt decreased by $5.9 million. So we were able to accumulate $1.2 million as well as pay down about $6 million during the year, which was a, it's always a tough budget year, but I thought that was a, a good job on the part of the city and the staff and the finance as well. And the other point we would make is we believe that the projections on revenue were very accurate. There was one matter beyond the control of the mayor and council of the general city relative to tax disbursement. You understand what that is. Uh, but that, other than that one matter, we were very accurate. I would also uh, be remiss if I did not recognize Gail Mage as the finance director <coughs> and her staff. They have done an outstanding job. They are very, um, they are difficult to work with in a positive way. <laughs> that is, they guard the city's money. They make sure that every department stays within the purchasing guidelines and the expenditure guidelines. They bring you timely budget adjustments, and it is a privilege for the management to work with Gail and her staff. Well done, Gail. Very well done. Good team effort there, though. That's what, what you're talking about there, Randy, with the staff. You know, uh, I, I think they've done a great job of uh, cutting down on some of the ex expenses and everything. And I think the citizens out there can be uh, feel comfortable that we look at the trying to do as much as we can with as little as we can and try to get by that way. Um, I guess we'll go into our report section for this. I think we need to vote on the. Oh, we do. We haven't voted on it yet, have we? I figure by the applause you accepted. <laughs> Sorry, that's two faux pas for the evening. Um, all right, the vote is all in favor. All in favor? Aye. 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 You sure we had done this already? No. And all those not in favor. Okay, motion carries. On to the next subject, reports. Mr. Ward. No report, sir. Uh, no report. Um, just like to make a comment about the Environmental and Appearance Advisory Committee. Um, this is the beginning of a new year, so Happy New Year to the citizens of Jacksonville. Please remember that the Environmental and Appearance Advisory Committee is currently taking applications for businesses and residential appearances awards. So we encourage citizens to please call in, submit applications um, for businesses and residentials um, awards for this upcoming year. Also remember, we're still uh, promoting the adoption program. So if there's any group, community, organization that would like to adopt a park, a street, or stream or a trail, please call um, City Hall and to basically convey your um, obligations or your commitment to do such. Uh, Mr. Councilwoman, uh, Councilman Willingham, I don't mean to step on your thunder, but I just wanted to also say that on um, Friday, April 25th, is going to be the 34th Arbor Day observance for the city of Jacksonville and it's slated to begin at 9.30 a.m. at Wooten Park. So if you're available for that, please come out and that's it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ms. Washington. Mr. Willingham. Okay. Mr. Bedner. 
Civic Affairs will be starting the new year off with a meeting Thursday, and we will pick up on our discussion of how the city is doing in terms of the Civic Index, which is sort of a barometer of all aspects of city government and community activities to see how well we're faring. Mayor That's President it. Bazaar. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, TDA uh, report, North Star Community Branding Program is still underway. Um, we're advancing the design of a logo that will be the major part of uh, the marketing of Jacksonville as a destination, and we're in the design phase currently. And we've been working on that design. Uh, we've gone through a lot of examples, and I think we've got it narrowed down now, and we'll be bringing that forward hopefully soon. Our next meeting of the authority is set for 1.30 p.m., January 30th, uh, 2014. We'll begin our work for, on our budget for FY15. Um, we welcome anyone that would like to attend, or obviously uh, you can view it via the web live or G10 on demand. Uh, tourism Development Fund, we will also start our work to consider how we will continue the tourism promotion program and uh, the spending of the promotion money that does produce the overnight stays uh, for our local lodging facilities. And that's the end of my report. Thank you. Dr. Woodruff. Yes, Mayor and Council. Several things. Uh, first of all, it's hard to believe that the holidays are behind us, but what that also means is that the Martin Luther King National uh, Recognition Weekend will be coming up. What that means is that before we meet again, we will have a holiday on Monday, January the 20th. So for all of those who uh, have their wives uh, trained to get the garbage out, please remind your wife that we're going to be on a modified schedule. Monday will be picked up Tuesday, Tuesday will be picked up Wednesday, Thursday will be picked up Thursday, Friday will be picked up Friday. So it'll just be one day off. Also on that same day, January the 20th, the Youth Council, many of their officers were sworn in tonight, the Youth Council will be having a volunteer day. It will begin at Northwoods United Methodist Church. You will gather there and they will go out and do various community service projects beginning at 10 a.m., expected to conclude at 2 p.m. Also, the city has recently, through its fire and uh, emergency services personnel, have delivered the city calendars for the coming year. If a citizen did not get one, please feel free to come by the front desk here at City Hall or come by the utility billing department and receive a calendar. The next meeting of the City Council, January 21st, will not be a full council meeting. It will rather be your workshop to establish the goals and priorities and discuss the beginning parts of our budget. That will begin at 4 o'clock across the street in the Youth Center, directly across from City Hall. I would encourage the public to watch this on G10 as we do broadcast all of our meetings live. The purpose of this meeting will be to really discuss the challenges that are going to be facing us in the year ahead. First part of the meeting, you will have a report from Harry Smith, the appraiser, who will talk about the results of revaluation, because by that time, Mr. Smith will have concluded the revaluation of all property in Onslow County. Obviously, that will give us our tax base for the coming year for the city. We will then have a presentation from the Board of Realtors relative to housing consumption, basically meaning what's selling, what's not in each category. We will then have a report from the City Development Services Department that talks about building permits and the trends that we're going to be seeing. And in that, the City Attorney and I will join and talk about an issue that comes up from time to time, and that's can the city in fact create a moratorium on housing? And the answer is no, we can't. But we'll be explaining what we can do and what the marketplace is doing itself to adjust to the issues of housing and housing consumption. And then we will get into real budget discussions that talk about things such as the audit, your fund balances, what are going to be our challenges for the coming year. So it's a very important session. I know all the council members are going to be there, and we hope that the public will tune in. Certainly the public is welcome to join us across the street if they would like. The last thing that we would um, mention is Jacksonville Parkway is now open. Now, if you don't know what Jacksonville Parkway is, that's the new bypass extension. 
The bypasses always come around the city and come to 17. It now goes over 17 and goes behind Target and Lowe's and eventually comes out across from the Commons entrance. The main thing I want you to remember is this. If you're driving on Jacksonville Parkway, does anybody know what the speed limit is? 45. And while that's my age, and that's my story and I'm sticking to it, please make sure that if you're on Jacksonville Parkway, you obey the 45 mile an hour speed limit. And then lastly, as always, Mayor and Council, it's a privilege to serve with you and on behalf of the staff, thank you all for your dedication to this city. Mr. Carter. Mayor, if, if I may, knowing that thousands watch this program, I certainly want to clarify our city manager's humor in terms of renouncing any part of the council urging the spouse to take out the garbage. <laughs> Do <That's> it. It. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, one thing that uh, Mayor, Liz Mayor for Tim Lazar pointed out to me is the uh, Special Olympics, Olympics is having its polar plunge uh, Saturday at 10 a.m. I guess at Oslo Beach. Is Oslo that correct? Beach. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm sure all the public's invited to attend in support of the uh, Special Olympics. Uh, I don't know if I would do it on a day like today, but uh, jump in. Well, Mayor uh, Ron Massey is in charge of many things with the city. He has arranged a special day of temperature. And according to Ron, while it's going to be 15 in the morning, it's going to be 73, I believe you said, <laughs> on Saturday. Probably with the temperature out like it was today, you'd be more comfortable in the water. <laughs> I think you would. But anyway, I do want to, uh, the only thing I had to report was uh, I just want to wish everybody at this point a, a wonderful and prosperous new year as we're going into this new year. Uh, and uh, a desire to, for everyone to stay safe and uh, stay warm. Well, we got this cold weather in front of us here, and uh, I would at this time entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 aye.